Hello and greetings once again from Berkshire Guitar Amplifier Repairs in Reading, England. On the bench today we have a Fender Blues Junior, one of my favourite little amplifiers, great little amps these. This one has a problem of a highly distorted output. Now I'm a little bit suspicious on this because the customer told me he was playing it quite loudly through headphones and via some sort of adapter box. Well, you can't get this thing off one on headphones without blowing your head off, so my suspicion is that the adapter box you've got has got some kind of power soak in it. I don't like power soaks, I know why people use them, but what happens is of course you crank the amp to max and it sounds pretty quiet in your headphones and you don't really notice that in fact the amp would be blowing your head off if you didn't have the power soak in place and so the amp is running at pretty much max and you can easily burn something out and there's nothing to tip you off that you're maxing the amp. Anyway that's my view on it. So I think um, I've already turned it on and strummed a guitar through it and it sounds hideous, very badly distorted. I'll uh, get it set up so that you can see in the back and we'll power it up again and you can have a listen. At this stage what am I thinking? It's not valves, he's put a whole new set of val valves in. When he got the problem he bought a set of valves, put them in no difference whatsoever. Uh, so I'm not going to even bother looking at the valves. Um, HT might have gone down a little bit. Um, possible it's blown the speaker. I'll check that. What else are we thinking? Um, distortion, distortion. Screen resistor might have blown. That would be fairly likely. Um, output transformer. Who? Let's hope not. I do have a spare output transformer. We could quickly try. Let's. Fingers crossed he hasn't cooked the output transformer. Anyway, let's spin it round, get the back off, get it powered up and you can have a listen. Okay, I've got the amp up on the bench ready to be looked at. I uh, haven't done any work yet on it. I think I'll just turn it on and confirm again that it all sounds pretty horrible. Uh, so I'll just let that warm up. I've got, I've got the guitar down here. <laughs> Sounds alright actually. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, okay, so bass notes. Oh, horrible distortion. Okay, that sounds really nasty. Um, I don't think it's a speaker, but why don't I just plug in my house speaker? I suppose it could have blown the speaker. Let's have a go. Oh, there's my house speaker. Definitely not. That's still horrendous. Okay, so that's not the speaker. Uh, it's not the valves because he told me he put a new set of valves in when he got this problem and it made no difference whatsoever. So we don't, we don't need to go valve hunting. Um, Well, I think the next thing to do is let's go hunting for some DC and see if we've got HT and a few other voltages and that sort of thing. Um, don't think I can do much more without doing that. I've had a visual inspection of the board. It all looks good. No leakage on the HT caps. We know we've got new valves. We know the speaker's okay. Um, I suppose it could be the output transformer, although he does say he hasn't been thrashing it. so. I'll take his word on that. Um, I do have an output transformer for this if I need to quickly swap it and it's actually quite easy to do. Um, it's this red lead, blue lead and the... where is it? Brown, brown, brown. There. Um, <coughs> in fact, now that I think about it and point to those leads, one thing we can do very quickly is to measure roughly what current is going through the two valves. I'm going to show you a way of doing that, but obviously I'm having to trust you that you know what you're doing, you have to be very careful. There's HT on these three um, leads, the red, that's the centre tap of the primary, primary of the output transformer and that goes to HT, and these two feed the anodes of each of the valves and they're pretty much at HT. However, because the output transformer secondary is roughly 100 ohms, 
you can quick and dirty measure the voltage between HT, DC voltage between HT and brown and HT and blue. And if it was say 2.5 volts, that's 25 milliamps. So you can get a rough fix on what's happening on, in the current on the valves. Um, right, so I'll turn it on. Let it warm up a bit. Shouldn't take long. There we go. Now remember you've got HT on these, so you can't you can't be touching these. So I'm gonna go on there and there. Okay, we've got three volts there, which I'm not unhappy with. That's about roughly 30 milliamps along this one. Whoa! What's happening? Whoa! What on earth is happening there? That's all over that's all over the place. I have no idea what's happening there. That would, however, would account for our problem. We've got one valve's working okay, the other valve isn't. So I'm not going to mess around too much. Let's look at some DC voltages and see if we can find out what's going on. So what I'm going to do first of all is just have a measure around because, because if the DC side of an amplifier is wrong, then the AC side won't be right. So obviously the first thing to do is check you've got HT. This is the HT cap here. So we'll turn it on. We've got 750 volt scale here. And what have we got? We've got, there's a positive 370, that's okay. Happy with that. Let's check these three. I've checked for leakage, they look okay. 344, 293, stepping down in voltage, just as we'd expect for the preamp side, 262. So HT is okay. I'm just going to turn off. Um, what next? I think, let's have a measure around on the actual valve base themselves to see what's going on. I'm particularly interested in pins, um, I think 7 is the anode on this, let me remember, yes, yeah, 7 is the anode on an EL84 and the screen voltage which is pin 9 on this, yes, pin 9. So let's turn on and we'll do HT first of all, so I'm going to go on to pin 7, 360 on the left hand valve, three. Five through on the right hand valve, that's okay. Um, let me just feel how. That's quite cool, that valve. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Right, this left hand valve is a lot hotter than the right hand one. I can almost grab that right hand one. In fact, I can. And I most definitely cannot grab that left hand one. Um, could be my eyes, but also the printing on that looks a little bit darker than that, implying that's been running a little bit hotter. Let's, um, let's turn it on a second. I've got a little um, infrared thermometer. Where is it? Here. Ah oh, yes, here it is. N interesting, fun little device. Little in infrared thermometer. Doesn't cost very much on eBay and it allows me to check the temperature of the two valves. So the left hand, the right hand one is it's obviously warming up, it's quite cold at the moment. 97, left hand 1, oh 140, look there's something wrong here. So I'll turn off again. That left hand valve is running much hotter than the right hand. Okay, that means it's taking more current than the right hand one. E let me, what were we doing? Oh yes, I know, let me now check the screen voltages, which is pin 7, pin 9 I beg your pardon on an EL84. So I'm going to turn on. The left hand one is 353, that's okay. The right hand one, ah, aha. Interesting, 93 volts look, compared with 322. All right, turn off again. That would, that would explain why this right hand valve, valve is running on the cool side and this left hand one's too hot to touch. Uh, that being normal, these valves run very hot, this one's running very cool. Okay, so obviously a standard favourite is the screen resistor. So I'm going to turn the camera off whilst I remind myself where the screen resistors are on a Blues Junior and I will rejoin you then. Okay, back again, I had a quick look at the circuit and the two screen resistors are 100 ohms each. And it's this one here, R35, I think, and R35. 
36, so 100 ohm, 100 ohm, they look okay. Can't see anything wrong with them, are not obviously burned out. All right, well, let's check their value. Um, we'll go to resistance, 2K should be right. And um, here's the first one, 98 ohms, that's all right. Oh, well, this one, hello, hello, hello. Oh, interesting. Make sure I'm on properly. I've fooled myself a few times in the past. Oh, well, this is looking good news. That R35 100 ohm resistor is open circuit. You wouldn't know it to look at it. It looks absolutely perfect. Let me see if I can zoom in a touch more for you. Put my little pointer there. Oh, yes, get quite a good. Is it going to focus for me? There we go. Just behind that blue wire, uh, which I'll just bend out of the way a bit for you. It's this this one here, and it looks absolutely perfect. Yet it's open circuit. <laughs> right. Well, that's actually quite good news because we can just tack another resistor across there. We don't have to get involved in taking the board out. It's open circuit, so it doesn't matter. So I will do that next, see if, I, see if I've got one. I'll go and have a look through my bits and see if I've got a 100 ohm, 1 watt or something to put in there. Yep, I managed to find a 100 ohm, uh, 1 watt, although these are only half a watt. Probably, that's probably why it went. And what I'm going to, going to attempt to do is to kind of, you know, J-hook the a lead around there and then just, then just solder it on but of course in order to do that properly I'm going to have to cut these leads short first of all like that make a little hook like that one and two then with a bit of luck I've turned it off by the way I've checked the caps are discharged and I've unplugged it from the main so we're nice and safe. I'll do anything for ratings but dying live on air is probably not the best thing to do. See that hooks around there very nicely that um, makes quite a nice neat little job without too much drama. Now using a screwdriver or something we can just Flatten these ends over a bit, like that. That's lovely. Now all we need to do is to solder it, and I'm hoping that we will be in business. One, two. That's nice and mechanically secure against the board there, so that's not going to flap around. Right, I think what I'm going to do now is just do what we did before. I want to turn on and do a quick measurement across HT one anode, HT the other anode, and with 100 ohms roughly secondary of the output transformer, we can do an Ohm's Law thingy and work out what's happening in terms of current going through the amp. So I'll plug it in. And let it warm up. There you go, I can hear it coming up. A bit louder, actually, we don't need all that volume. All right, so now from H, I've got this on the 20 volt scale. Even though, don't forget, this is 350 volts. But if this is 352 volts, <laughs> we're just going to measure 2 volts. So let's have a look. We've gone HT, and we're going here. And that's 38 milliamps. That's quite, that's quite hot, so I'll, I'll be wanting to rebias this and turn it down. I'm hoping this. Ah, excellent. 35, 36 milliamps. Fantastic. So now we've got this amp is now working. Let's just play some bass notes and see. Jack had come out the guitar. There we 
we go. We're in business now. So now all I'm going to do is bias this amp. And to do that, we need to. Uh, I've got I've got a separate video on biasing the Blues Junior, uh, but I might quickly show you one here again. Um, it's one of these resistors here. I never can remember. I have to look up my own bias manual, the one I wrote for this, and um, remind myself which resistor you have to reduce the value of to reduce the value of the current. I'll also let you know what we are aiming for in terms of bias current. OK, I'm just going to quickly bias this amp. I'm not going to spend too long on it. I've already done a bias video on the amp. But to bias it, we need about 24, 23 milliamps through the tubes. And I'm going to be measuring with my multimeter across, if you remember, HT to one of the leads, let's say brown. And we'll see what current's going through one valve. And we're looking for about, say, 2.3 volts if we want 23 um, milliamps. And to adjust this, I'm going to reduce the value of R51, which is the 33K resistor. You can't see it terribly well because I've got some croc clips clipped onto it. Go into my resistance decade box. And this allows me to uh, dial in different values of resistor. Of course, if you don't have one of these, you're just going to have to hot swap resistors. And we need to reduce the value of R51, uh, the 33K resistor. And so I'm going to be putting a resistor in parallel with it. We'll start off with, uh, I don't know, 180k or something and see what that does. And then we can just reduce the value on the resistance decade box until we get about 23 milliamps. So I'll turn on the amp. And uh, <coughs> see what it does. I'm going to now measure from the HT to the brown lead. So that's from this red lead here to the brown. And we've got our 32 milliamps or 3.2 volts, which is too high. So I'm just going to reduce the value of this resistor to say 180. Okay, wrong way, let's see what that does. So that should have come down Come down a bit, look, to 30 milliamps. Um, well, let's be bold and try 80k. I don't know why 80, that just happened to be dialed in already. See how far we're getting with this. So red and blue, or brown, doesn't matter really. Oh, there we go. So now we're 23 milliamps, look, that's perfect. So the nearest resistor value to that is 82k. So I'll just put an 82k on the box dial that in and have a little look 23 24 milliamps perfect and on the blue we've got 22 that's perfect so that amp is now biased of course what I now need to do is to solder an 82k resistor across that existing 33k resistor and then we'll just double check that it's all looking good so I'll do that next Okay, there you go. There's just a quick shot of that 82k resistor soldered across the 33k. So now all we need to do is turn it on and just check that bias is still okay. And I'll do that now. Okay, so we'll turn the amp on. Plug it in. And I will now measure in my usual place from HT to the brown lead. warming up look and we're looking for about 23 it's not critical anything between 20 and 26 27 is okay but that's settling down nicely look at about 24 milliamps maybe yeah 24 okay well there we go uh, it did turn out to be a screen resistor in the end although it didn't look cooked it looked absolutely perfect to me just open circuit I think half a watt's a bit skinny in that position. I would have put a one watt resistor in the screen there. Oh well. Anyway, we managed to fix it top side without taking the board out, which isn't very easy on these amps. And we got it biased up okay, and it's good to go. I'm sure the customer will be very delighted. 
because he said, he said to me, if it's going to cost several hundred pounds, let's have a second thought about it. But actually the bill was 57 quid, I think. So, so he's very, very happy. Good. Well, another one under the belt and I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks as ever for watching.